Hello, everybody. Welcome to your January 2021 part two. So we've had a lot of doings on the third dimensional plane. I want to thank you for subscribing as well, house cleaning. Um, because when you subscribe, you also receive my posts that I make over on the YouTube community, which people seem to enjoy. And further, I do a lot more teaching, sharing, and discussion over on my Patreon through both my monthly live stream Q&A and through the consciousness videos that I share. So, and when you sign up for a year, you get a discount. I've kept it very affordable for those of you who are interested in going a little bit deeper with my work and my information and what's going on on the globe. So thank you. That will be in the description as well as the comment section, the links. And of course, sessions and coaching. I do a lot of coaching. Those links are below as well. So we've had some real dense uh, developments the first half of January, and I'll just share for a moment that my guides brought that in about 10 weeks ago. I shared that with my cousin, who's also my tech help. I'm like, they just showed me people breaching a government building. They had winter coats on. They do that. I've come to learn to prepare me psychically and emotionally because I'm interfacing with all of you lovely people. So that was already in the timeline is another good piece of information. So uh, we're moving through these times and were any of you really surprised? And if you were, trust people when they show you who you are. We're still under this Neptune square node influence, which is all the disillusionment and propaganda and the deepening confusion for a lot of people on the planet in the United States. But again, when you lower the level of human quality and options for humans, anger grows. Then people come in co-opt that anger and direct it in the ways that they want to direct it. So I hold a lot of compassion for the anger. I hold a lot of prayer for what people do with that. And so we're going to be making a big shift at the inauguration, but you know, we're still dealing with the breaking down of these systems. Uh, an email just came in that Tom Vilsack, uh, who's Mr. Monsanto, is being nominated for the Secretary of Agriculture. So, so you see the times that we're in and the density that's coming up and coming up and coming up on this playing field of our lives for growth. But that's how we grow is through what we would see as the duality of self-serving, greed, egoic versus really moving into the heart space and being a co-creative practitioner. And I'm talking about this specifically over on Patreon this month in a two-part series. So we open this time to the one and only Jupiter square Uranus, which is exact on Sunday the 17th from six degrees of Aquarius to Taurus. And then Jupiter zips away. He won't be hanging out like Saturn will throughout this year. Uh, but this sets up a very dynamic square between those these two fixed signs. Uh, one, Aquarius, is about ruling the masses and collective energy. Friendships, too. Friendships, groups, support systems, um, future trends, your goals, uh, formulating goals of what will bring happiness and purpose and meaning into your life. And I know that some of you have really been pushed out of jobs and situations that you thought would be secure and sustainable. But again, in my experience, I find that happens when your soul, your higher self wants to move you on to another level of development. And we hang on to things. 
You know, uh, humans don't like deep change. They don't usually opt for that. Um, I do, but <laughs> and I know some of you do, but so we have to be pushed to uh, step out of our comfort zones. So you can see this energy in play as well. But certainly this is a focus on your value systems and your finances and your personal resources and your goals and how you're thinking about future and future timelines. This can be quite an exciting energy uh, full of optimism and breakthroughs and you're interested in the new and the different and the interesting. And so much optimism is found here, but also just be aware of your resources and managing your thoughts towards what is sustainable for you in the future. You may want to exercise caution through this optimism bubble if you're trying to set into motion long-term plans and projects, that's all. Knowing that Saturn's going to be moving into square with Uranus in February, that will really trim the fat and may have you take a look at any plans that need to be grounded more and organized more. So this is very good in a lot of ways. On Tuesday the 19th, the sun heads into Aquarius. So, and his job is to bring conscious personal awareness to the energy of these times, the macro to the micro, and how that affects and pertains to you personally. Uh, your personal life is now getting comfortable and getting familiar with these new trends on planet. Uh, via the Saturn-Jupiter transit of Aquarius. So this is an individualizing time for getting familiar with this. And again, what are your goals? What would make you happy? Uh, plans for yourself. You're calling now. Who will aid and support you? Who, are, who will your helpmates be? And how can you reach out for more support? This transit also is highlighting the United States inauguration the following day on the 20th, as the sun also represents leadership. The progressed moon of the United States is transiting through Aquarius over the next two and a half to three years, really, really bringing the emotional energy of this in. Yet we have the Mars conjunct Uranus um, transit that is in orb now and perfects on Wednesday the 20th at 3.38 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which of course is Inauguration Day in the United States. This transit is a strong outrush of energy and can, can be felt absolutely as unexpected and dynamic situations and a lot of react. This is the most combustible transit you can think of with unexpected energy falling right on Inauguration Day. So be aware of that. People behave and will behave in very unpredictable and highly reactive ways, shocking ways in some cases. And if you have personal planets from five to nine degrees of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius, you will feel this quite personally as somewhat jarring, maybe liberating, shocking, or a huge relief of pressure. It'll be different for different people. But um, it is important to really center and ground and stabilize your energy and your plans during this time. The moon is void in reactive and angry and individuating Aries on the 20th inauguration day. And its last aspect was to subversive and manipulative Pluto at 3.29 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So the moon goes void which means nothing of consequence really happens, ostensibly. 
But at 1.56 p.m., so almost 2 p.m., the inaugurational swearing-in occurs at noon. The moon transits into grounded, determined Taurus, and then moves into its square with Saturn, which perfects at 10 p.m. on the 20th. So the afternoon and evening hours surrounding this day can bring a lot of instability, excitement, oppressive feelings and actions. On Saturday the 23rd, the sun makes his annual conjunction to Saturn, delivering for some perhaps a sense of heaviness, responsibility, duty, lowered energy. Uh, be aware that your energy system may be Saturn, remember, contracts. Yet anything that requires um, focus and determination is strongly favored. Optimism is absolutely felt because Mars will be squaring Jupiter uh, through the weekend, and which highlights bravery and increased confidence and opportunity. And Venus now in Capricorn, stabilizing Capricorn, is in a loving creative, compassionate, and artistic mood as she sextiles Neptune from 19 degrees of Capricorn to Pisces. So this should be offered up or experienced as grounded inspiration in your relationships, in your finances, in your creativity. So even though the Sun Saturn is quite a focus on commitments and responsibility. We have these very light and flowing energy surrounding this, bringing perspective and a nice amalgamation of possibility. Now, Mercury is now slow, slowing down for his first retrograde of the year, which will perfect on Saturday, January 30th when the energy of life rhythms and plans and mental focus slows for a backward glance through February 20th, where he stations direct at one degree of Aquarius. So uh, in the infinite wisdom of the universe and consciousness and creativity, our minds are really being taken through this passage to get acquainted with, to think, to ground, to rest a bit also. Mercury retrograde is a beautiful time for resting from Aquarius, the social media, right? The 24-7 information that's coming at us all the time. And to go back to goals, plans, connections, friends, that you will now give yourself the time to cultivate, focus upon, and perhaps even nurture. One of the luckiest days of the year occurs on Thursday the 28th, when the sun conjuncts Jupiter in Aquarius at nine degrees. So um, optimism, heightened possibilities, generosity of spirit, faith is highlighted in life on planet Earth at this time. Venus is also conjunct the energy of soul, depth perception, and transformative Pluto at 25 degrees of Capricorn. There might be important developments now with money, government assistance, Certainly relationship dynamics are magnified. Um, this can also be about soul work and the perception of depth regarding Venus, your own value, your own self-esteem, your own personal resources. The 28th is also the full moon in the sign of leadership, executive ability, your inner child, play, creativity, and honoring your pleasures and creative urges at this full moon in Leo at nine degrees on the 28th of the month. The moon is squaring though, this Mars Uranus energy in Taurus. 
So there's pressure and tension with money, finances, economy, resources. Um, unexpected developments. It is, the moon is conjunct, the energy of maturity, responsibility, obstacles, hard work, focus, determination, Saturn. It's sextiling, the energy of wisdom and breaking free from the low vibration, Chiron in Aries. So this full moon is very busy. It's doing a lot of things, but certainly developments with children, with your creativity, with your personal life, with your personal projects, applying some tension to your sense of self, your self-confidence, your personal resources, economic structures on the planet. But the sextile to Chiron, remember Chiron is the bridge, the connecting bridge between Saturn the fear-based programming that this planet has been operating under um, and the awareness of the programming that we've all been under in order to heal from it and integrate from it. Chiron swings between Saturn and Uranus. You know, Uranus is the spiritual awakening, the soul awakening, uh, the freedom themes from the Saturn programming. Chiron is the bridger of that. All right. Much love to all of you. Take good care of self. Take good care of others. Stabilize, ground, center. Be and think about love. Talk to you again soon.